Today we'll talk about hyponatremia. Hyponatremia is the most common electrolyte abnormality seen in the hospital. It's very important to know how to manage hyponatremia as it's seen in many different clinical entities. The first step, however, is to rule out pseudohyponatremia. This is seen in two conditions, predominantly hyperglycemia and increased total protein. If the glucose and total protein are normal, the next step is to assess the volume status of the patient. Let's build our tree. There's hypovolemic hyponatremia. Common causes include nausea, vomiting, and GI bleeding. There's hypervolemic hyponatremia. Causes are the edematous states, CHF, cirrhosis, and nephrosis. And there's euvolemic hyponatremia. Causes include hypothyroidism, adrenal insufficiency, and SIADH. When looking at the causes of hyponatremia, it's important to understand that all of these states are defined as excess water states, which clinically represents the presence of antidiuretic hormone. The question is, is the ADH that's present, is it appropriate, as would be seen in hypovolemic hyponatremia and hypervolemic hyponatremia, or is it inappropriate, as would be seen in euvolemic hyponatremia? Inappropriate ADH is ADH stimulated by the, in the setting of normal volume status. Hypovolemic patients and hypervolemic patients have intravascular volume depletion and have appropriate ADH secretion. We'll revisit this shortly. Other causes include psychogenic polydipsia, beer potomania, and tea and toast diet. These states are defined as overwhelming the system with water leading to hypotonicity and the absence of ADH as the body attempts to make more urine, particularly dilute urine. Let's talk about the tests now. Urinalysis and urine sodium. These two tests will help you figure out what is causing the hyponatremia. If the patient has a dilute urine or a low specific gravity, that would suggest the absence of ADH and the presence of one of the three causes defined here. If the patient has concentrated urine or an elevated specific gravity, that would suggest the presence of ADH. Now the question is, is the ADH appropriate, as in hypovolemic or hypervolemic hyponatremia, where the body perceives low perfusion, stimulates renin and utensin and aldosterone, which manifests as a low urine sodium in the setting of concentrated urine. This is contrasted with euvolemic hyponatremia, where the patient is volume expanded and not intravascular depleted, and it would have ADH secretion autonomously, presenting with concentrated urine and elevated urine sodium. So in summary, if the patient has a concentrated urine, the next step would be to, to check the urine sodium. If it's low, it suggests intravascular volume depletion. If it's high, it suggests euvolemic hyponatremia. One last take home point, to define the patient as having SIADH, one must rule out hypothyroidism and adrenal insufficiency. That's hyponatremia.